Today, I'll be showing you how to set up a stock Xbox console to run the new Insignia online service, which is a replacement for the Xbox Live service, which ceased operations in 2010. Now, there is an official guide on the website on how to do this, but I'm gonna slightly change things up a little bit and go the full throttle with the soft modding of my particular Xbox. The reason for that is the process for modding it the Insignia way is nearly as much effort as just going the full hog to get the full Rocky V soft mod experience. So today I'm going to show you how to mod an Xbox with a Rocky V and then I'll show you how to install Insignia on top of that. There are a few things you need to know first and a few things you need to buy so we'll be going through that. Don't worry it's all very cheap and we'll have you online again playing Unreal Championship in no time. Uh, there is a few shout outs I want to do just before we begin. Um, I followed a couple of different tutorials and I've just sort of amalgamated all the information into this video. So one, there is the official guide for Rocky V, which is linked below, as well as a couple of videos by Mr. Mario 2011. He, he did a great video which goes along with the written guide I just mentioned on how to soft mod your Xbox with Rocky V, as well as a separate video released quite recently on how to install Insignia on top of that. So. Like I said, I'm just going to put all the information together, but shout outs where credit is due. Anyway, let's get started. Before you do anything, you'll need to request an invitation code since Insignia is still in open beta. Presumably, you won't need to do this once there's a full release, but right now you can send off your email on Insignia's landing page. This is a one-off code, but mine took several days to come through, so I'd recommend requesting it as soon as possible. There are a few items you'll need for this soft mod too. First, we'll need a cable. This plugs into a Xbox controller port, but includes a female USB port on the other end. These cost approximately $10 on sites like eBay or Amazon. Most modern USB flash drives will not be compatible with the Xbox, however. From what I can tell, it needs to be USB 1.1 compatible and under one gigabyte in capacity. You may have a formerly loved drive sitting in a drawer or somewhere that's suitable, but I had to buy one online. Again, not expensive or difficult to find, but you're unlikely to find one in retail. I needed one quick, so had to buy 10 of the bloody things because that's all that was available through Amazon's one day shipping, but you can buy them individually as well. Mine were a capacity of 512 megabytes, and from what I can tell, if you search, it's the same colorful flip out drive that appears over and over. In my case, they are all compatible with the Xbox. Next, we need a game that a save game exploit is compatible with. Currently, there are five titles to choose from. The original Splinter Cell, Mech Assault, 007 Agent Under Fire, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4, and Metal Arms Glitch in the System. I already happen to own both 007 and Tony Hawk's, but you'll need at least one to use an exploit. These are still currently cheap. I searched for Splinter Cell and 007 eBay listings, and most were under $15. Next, we need to be sure the Xbox is running the correct firmware that supported Xbox Live. The simplest way to do this is by selecting the Xbox Live option from the Xbox main menu and seeing if a select account screen appears. Another way is to navigate to settings, system info, and wait for the text to scroll until you get two strings of numbers. The string starting with D refers to the dashboard version. The number we need is 5960. If your number is lower, then you'll need to upgrade the console. Fortunately, this is easily done. Any later game released will include the update and can install it. You'll just need to run the game and select the Xbox Live option. The list of games that can do this is quite long and I'm sure you own at least one, but check the link in the description regardless since it might be another potential purchase before you begin the mod. After you've confirmed the Xbox is running the correct version, you'll need to be sure it can connect to the internet. I'd recommend a wired solution in this case, and for me personally, that meant an Ethernet cable running to my bathroom where a Wi-Fi extender happens to be plugged in. However you decide to plug it in, you can confirm it's connected to a network by navigating to Settings, Network Settings, and choosing Connect. You should receive three out of four green circles, with the failure, of course, being that it can't connect to Xbox Live. Now, plug the flash drive into your Xbox using the cable adapter. This is a quick and easy way to not only format the drive to be Xbox friendly, but also determine if the drive is compatible to begin with. Head to the memory menu. A message stating that the flash drive isn't working correctly and has been erased should show. This is good. This is what it should say. From this point onwards, it will be formatted to work with the Xbox. If the drive is not compatible, you won't see any memory unit appear at all. Just what's in the Xbox's internal memory. With the flash drive ready, we need to move to a computer. 
I can't speak for Mac, but Windows will try to format the drive. Say no to this, as we need it to stay Xbox friendly. We'll be using a program called Explorer 360 to transfer the exploited game saves onto the flash drive. A link to a direct download can be found in the description. I personally experienced issues with getting it to run in both Windows 10 and 11 however. A bit of digging seems to indicate that the program is not fond of 64-bit operating systems. It will claim it needs a DLL file to run. Personally, I'm not too fond of downloading random DLL files as they are usually only found on dodgy looking websites. Fortunately, I found a solution on Reddit where you can download it directly from Microsoft. This is linked in the description too, but basically there is a Microsoft.NET Framework redistributable package you can download that includes the correct DLL file. For reasons unknown to me, the installer isn't available in English, but French is easy enough to follow. Otherwise, you can use Google Translate. Once it's installed, there are instructions on the Reddit thread about where to find the DLL file. Simply copy this to the same folder where Explorer 360 is located, and that should be it. This solution worked for me in Windows 10, but should work in Windows 11 also. Now, we'll need to download what is called the Xbox Soft Modding Tool. This is a series of folders and files, but we'll need to navigate to the Soft Mod Package folder. Here, you'll find save files which are used for the exploit, as well as the Soft Mod installation. Unzip the folder named Soft Mod Save, as well as the save file you'll need. Once unzipped, Within, you'll find a folder called UData, and within that, you'll find a folder that is a series of numbers. This is the folder that will need to be copied to the flash drive. Fire up Explorer 360. Select the drive, open, and hard drive or mem card. Partition 0 should appear, which is the flash drive. Select this, and simply drag the numbered folders for the soft mod and the game save into the window. Once the copying is complete, go drive and close. You can now close Explorer 360 and safely eject the flash drive through Windows. Plug the flash drive back into your Xbox and navigate to the memory menu. Select the flash drive and copy the save files to the internal memory. You can do this by selecting the file, pushing right, and then A. From here, confirm you wish to copy it to the internal memory. Now, run the game and follow the instructions listed here. You can either pause now or follow the link in the description. Each game's process is a little different but I'll be showing Tony Hawk and 007 in this video. The reason I'm showing both is because Tony Hawk's didn't actually work for me. There are saves available for PAL, NTSC, and one labeled as region free. I tried both the PAL and region free saves, but encountered a black screen both times. Regardless, the process is to select free skate, your choice of character, play level, created park, load park, yes to the prompt, Hack Xbox. OK to the prompt. And play Park. The fact it didn't work was disconcerting since my copy of 007 wasn't supposed to work either. According to the wiki, only the Black Label or Platinum Hits versions with a certain number listed on the disc will work. Mine is a Classics version, which I appear to have paid two bucks for, but it doesn't include that number anywhere on the disc. Still, it did work. The process for Agent Under Fire is to choose Select Mission from the main menu, Trouble in Paradise, and wait for the helicopter to appear in the cutscene that plays. As soon as you see or hear that, push the Start button and select Quit Mission. Select Yes at the prompt. Push B to go back to the main menu and select Load Mission. Choose Xbox Hard Disk and the soft modding tool will begin. Here, the Xbox LED will turn red. This is normal. But if the colour changes to red and nothing happens on screen, you can simultaneously hold down both back triggers along with the black and back buttons to reboot the installer. I guess I probably should have tried that with Tony Hawk's. Read through and accept the prompts. Once it's done what it needs to do, the Xbox will reboot. During the standard boot animation, eject the disc for the game you used for the exploit. Well done, your console has now been soft modded. There are a few housekeeping tasks we'll need to complete before we install Insignia, however. First, we need to null the HDD key. This will change the hard drive's unique 32 digit code to 32 ones instead. This will make hard drive replacement much easier in the future if things go south. The custom dashboard has a tool built in to achieve this. Navigate to the Applications menu and choose NK Patcher Settings, EEPROM, Advanced Features, Hard Drive, and change EEPROM HDD key. Several warnings will appear, one specifically mentioning to not do this if you've already set up Insignia. Since we haven't, it's fine to let the program do its thing. 
Take note that the master password will be set to Team Assembly, which is one word in in caps, and get yourself back onto a computer. We'll be backing up the EEPROM, which is another method to rescue the Xbox if things go south. Please, don't skip this or the HDD key nulling. Install a program in Windows called WinSCP. Like always, I'll leave a link in the description. While the Xbox is running and connected to the same network, select FTP as the file protocol, leave the encryption drop down as no encryption, and type in the Xbox's IP address into the hostname field, which is listed here on the Xbox's dashboard, leave the port number as 21, the username and password are both Xbox or lowercase, and then you may as well save the login information for convenience next time. Now hit log in. After a brief pause, you'll be shown two windows. The one on the left shows the directory of the computer you're using, while on the right, we can see the internal storage for the Xbox. On the Xbox's window, navigate to the E folder, right click the backups folder and choose download. Choose somewhere you won't lose it. Cloud storage is probably a good idea. Next, we need to reinstall the original Xbox's dashboard as this will be used to access Insignia when it's installed. To do this, we'll need to burn a DVD called the Extras Disk. A direct download link for the ISO file can be found in the description. I'd recommend ngburn for disk burning duties. Pop a blank DVD R into your computer, select the file, and choose a low write speed like 2.4. Be sure to select the Verify checkbox and you're off to the races. Once done, insert the disk into the Xbox. Once the disk is loaded, navigate to Dashboards and then MS Dashboards. Select Install and Yes to the prompts. I'd personally recommend installing Audio 2 since you may have noticed how eerily quiet the dashboard has been since the soft mod. Once installed, remove the disk and reboot the Xbox. Now, with sound in the background, navigate to Applications and Xbox Dashboard. The OG dashboard will launch and if we go back to the System Info, we'll see the dashboard version is still 5960. Next, we need to change the Xbox's IP from dynamic to fixed. Certain games only work online if the IP is static. Back on your computer, which needs to be connected to the same network as the Xbox, head to the command prompt and type ipconfig followed by the enter key. Take note of the subnet mask and default gateway IPs. Back on the Xbox, navigate to the settings menu and then the network menu. From here, we should be able to enter five different IP addresses, but I encountered a glitch where it wasn't saving the inputted numbers. If you experience this too, I found that setting the type to static, exiting and saving the settings, and then rebooting the console worked. Back in the network settings, set the IP address to what is listed in the main menu. This is the same string of numbers you entered into the FTP program. Below that, subnet mask and gateway are what you noted through the command prompt on your computer, and DNS1 is the number listed on Insignia's Connect page. During this video's production it was this, but be sure to check the page during your setup just in case it's changed. Lastly, we can set an alternative DNS. Popular choices are Cloudflare's, which are all 1's, and Google's, which are all 8's. After inputting all those numbers, scroll down to the bottom of the menu, choose Save, and reboot the Xbox. Finally, it's time to install Insignia. Head back to a computer and follow the download link in the description for the installation assistant. Download that file and place it in a folder named something like Insignia Setup. Again, fire up WinSCP and place your Insignia Setup folder in E, Applications. Exit WinSCP and reboot your Xbox. Back on the Xbox, navigate to Applications and Insignia Setup. All you need to select is Register Xbox. It will appear to do nothing for about 10 seconds, but you should then receive a message that the Xbox has been successfully registered. There is a troubleshooting wizard if that does not happen, but otherwise, you can select Quit Setup Assistant. Head back to the original MS dashboard and recheck the connection status. Now you should get a green circle for the final item connected to Xbox Live. We're getting close. Back at the main menu, select Xbox Live, New Account, and press Continue to the Welcome message. For the billing region, choose whatever country you're residing in. If your country isn't listed, choose whatever is geographically closest to you. I did have connection issues during this stage, but it worked after several attempts. It is still in beta after all. Read through and accept the terms of use to continue. Next, you can choose a gamer tag. If your preference is already taken, a suitable alternative will be recommended. Luckily for me, there are no other RGO imposters on the network yet. Now, input the code that was sent by email when you requested an invite. Thankfully, this is not case sensitive. 
After that, there will be a few mostly redundant screens about the purchase and refund policies, since Insignia is free, but the refund screen does give useful information about entering a credit card number. Straight up, do not enter a real credit card. Instead, select Visa, make up a cardholder name, the card number is 4, with the rest of the numbers being 1s, choose an expiry date far in the future, and also enter a phony phone number. Next, when prompted to enter an email address, be sure to use the same address you used to request the invite code. This is a vital step. Otherwise, it doesn't matter what you choose for the marketing information. Select yes to the create account screen. Besides setting a controller pin if you wish, that's it. You're in. Now it's simply a case of loading up your favorite supported game and selecting the Xbox Live menu. Speaking of supported games, as of writing, there are 52 to currently choose from. Some obvious titles are missing, like Halo, but hopefully we'll see that added soon. As for my experiences playing, they were technically good. But man, I suck at online gaming. Reminds me why I love my precious single player experiences so much. I have the reflexes of a koala. Regardless, I gave Unreal Tournament a go first. The insignia service indicated real people were matchmaking, but I'm sure I was instead playing against bots. Why? Because they were too easy to kill and had generic names. So I went to the next active game, Counter-Strike, the old faithful. Straight away I stared at my counterpart and pondered if he was real. The only way to tell for certain, of course, is the jump test. Yes, he's real. But unfortunately, we couldn't find any terrorists and kind of just aimlessly wandered around the map until we lost. Next, I gave 13 a go, and get this, played against two people at once. I was overwhelmed. In fact, I didn't get a single kill. I knew they weren't bots either because of the teabagging. Now, I'm not saying they were definitely cheating, but come on. Even with them wearing armor, I shot these guys as much as they shot me and never got a single kill. There were points where they were getting blasted point blank with my shotgun while they sprayed and prayed and nothing. Also interesting how it was a death match, but they never killed each other as well. Stupid teabaggers. All right, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Oh, they're playing on DLC maps, which I of course can't download. I guess there must be a patched ISO out there somewhere, which I couldn't locate while well, they're all still rocking the original downloads from over 17 years ago. Respect. Let's now move away from weapons and play some Toka Race Driver 2. A classic. I played this on PC when it was released since I didn't own a new gen console at the time. I was certainly rusty and was annihilated in the first round. Even all the bots beat me, let alone the other human. But having gotten to grips with the handling, I did a lot better in round two. Still, didn't get past the other player. They were just too good, but I at least held the silver podium. Okay, round three, time to shine. This looks like it might be the Bathurst track too. Time to make Australia proud. It's a windy and slender track. Using this to my advantage, I was able to trail my opponent and waiting for the right moment, bam, pit maneuver. Live dirty, play dirty. For the first time in my insignia experience, I was winning something. Well, not the race yet, since I still technically had three bots to overtake, but I was running on pure adrenaline, excited to be in charge. The wind rushed through my hair as I made my country and countless gum trees proud. I, oh, never mind. It was all lost in an instant. But hey, on the plus side, I'm now ranked just 172 on the leaderboard. I told my mum. So the overall experience was good, even though this shows just how much I suck at games compared to my contemporaries. Regardless, I experienced little lag. This is a great sign considering my location. If I can play lag free against Americans, it should bode well for the rest of the population centers around the globe. There were several times the service wouldn't connect, but these issues were always fleeting. We do have to remember that this service is in beta, which of course reflects on the active user base. It was obvious there weren't many players online as I tested this. In my experience, there were usually between 15 to 30 other players online with nearly 4,000 members total. But keep in mind, this was spread over 50 games. Still, I'm hoping to do my part by releasing this video and getting more people online. It is an open beta, remember, so anyone can now join. I'll most definitely be doing a follow-up video when it's out of beta and hopefully with Halo. But until then, enjoy your soft modded Xbox. Catch you in the next video.